they betrayed him for being weak, but he climbed a tower and became God. In an unknown world, there stood a tower called the Tower of God. This tower had the power to grant any wish, like fame, riches, power, or become a god. But there was a catch. To get what you wanted, you had to climb the tower, face its challenges, and reach the very top. At the pinnacle of the tower, everything you desired could be yours. At the bottom of the tower, in a dark and lonely cave, lived a boy known as the 25th Bomb. Baum had no idea how he ended up in that cave. In fact, he had no memories of his life before. Baum found himself in the cave for days, and all he wanted was to escape. He tried with all his might, using the rocks he found in the cave to break through the cave's ceiling. Living in the darkness had grown tiring, and he longed to see the light. Baum persevered and, after some time, he succeeded. He made a hole in the cave's roof and light poured in. It was through that hole that Baum first saw a girl named Rachel. She had heard Baum's efforts and had broken the roof with a rock to help him. Rachel climbed inside the cave, and she and Baum quickly became friends. Their bond grew stronger, as Rachel was the first person Baum had seen since he woke up in that cave. She helped Baum relearn many things he had forgotten and told him about the stars that shone at the top of the tower. Rachel had a dream of seeing those stars, and she aspired to climb the tower to make that dream come true. But Baum, who only knew the cave and his best friend Rachel, wanted her to stay with him forever. One fateful day, Rachel made the decision to leave and run towards the tower's entrance, determined to chase her dream of seeing the stars. Baum ran after her, desperately trying to stop her from leaving him. He caught up to her and asked her where she was going. Rachel apologized and explained that she had to leave him behind because she was determined to climb the tower. In that moment, Rachel was enveloped in light and started disappearing. Simultaneously, the tower's doors swung open, and a massive, powerful hand extended down towards Baum. Driven by his obsession with Rachel, Baum somehow managed to enter the tower as well. He awoke in a grand corridor and met the tower's guardian, Hedon. Hedon seemed pleased that Baum had arrived. Baum was surprised that Hedon knew his name, thinking that perhaps Rachel had told him. Baum urgently asked where Rachel was, but Hedon interrupted, telling him that all the answers he sought lay at the top of the tower. Hedon then presented a question, would Baum be willing to take the necessary test to climb the tower and find what he was searching for? Baum was determined to find Rachel and would do anything to bring her back. He couldn't bear to see her go. Hedon then altered the room and revealed a cage behind Baum. Hedon explained the rules. To pass the test, Baum had to enter the gigantic cage and break a large ball inside it while avoiding the attacks of an armored steel eel also inside the cage. If he succeeded, he would pass the test and move on to the next floor of the tower to continue his search. Hedon warned Baum that the test was extremely difficult and that he could withdraw now. The tower was dangerous and someone as weak as Baum could lose their life attempting it. However, Baum paid no attention to Hedon's words and rushed towards the cage. But just as he was about to enter, a girl stopped him by kicking him in the face. The girl named Yuri and a boy named Evan started speaking a strange language that Baum couldn't understand. But don't worry, Evan had a special ball called a pocket that turned their words into something Baum could understand. They said Baum was an irregular, which meant he came into the tower all by himself, unlike other regular folks. Baum was on this journey to find his friend Rachel, and that's why he ended up in the tower. Hedon came by to them and figured out that Yuri was a princess of Zahard. She introduced herself and Evan. Hedon warned Yuri that if the big boss of the tower, Zahard, found out she was helping Baum, there would be big trouble. Yuri thought the test was too tough for a newcomer, and she said even folks on the 20th floor would find it hard. But Hedon said Baum was an irregular, and Yuri thought he was harmless. Evan thought the same. Hedon had an idea. He told Yuri that if she wanted to help Baum so badly, she should lend him a special sword called the Black March. It was part of a legendary set of swords in the tower. But Evan wasn't too sure about this idea, as only the princesses were supposed to use it. Yuri finally agreed and handed the Black March to Baum. She said she did it because he had a pretty face. Baum took the sword and went into a cage, where the giant eel attacked him. Baum tried to fight the eel with the sword but had some trouble when the eel ate him and Baum injured it from the inside. He succeeded in getting away from the eel and focus on the ball. Baum kept trying to break the black sphere, hoping for a miracle. But the eel came back to attack him. Evan shouted for Baum to ask the Black March for help. Yuri said the sword wouldn't listen to her so it won't help. But Baum talked to the sword, and it lit up. The sword spirit talked to him and agreed to help because he was cute. With the Black March's power, Baum beat the eel, broke the sphere and moved to the next floor. Yuri tried to follow, but Hedon stopped her and killed the eel with his staff. Now, Baum found himself on the second floor, and there was a big battle with around 400 people. It was way better than the dark and creepy previous floor. 
Baum was amazed, but he had no time to enjoy it. A voice from a floating black cube called a lighthouse said they had to fight until only 200 were left to move on. The test started, and Baum used his sword to defend himself from others who tried to clap him. But then he faced a big, multiple-eyed creature. He was in trouble when two new people, Kun Agro and Rack Wraithraiser, came to them. Rack wanted to hunt Baum, and Kun was curious about the Black March Sword. Rack really wanted to fight Baum because he thought of him as prey. Baum looked at his rivals, and he saw that Rack was pointing his lance right at his head. Kun wondered why a talking alligator like Rack would be valuable. Baum saw a chance to get away and moved a bit. Kun teased Rack by asking if he was Baum's pet. But Baum said that Rack wasn't his pet because Rack was trying to clap him. Rack got mad and stomped his feet, saying his name was Rack Wraithraiser and wanted Kun to call him that. Kun thought Rack was just like the other people who wanted to fight. He decided to leave, but he noticed something on Baum's sword. It had the same mark as the 13-month series swords, and this made Kun curious. He made Rack fall and then ran away with Baum. Rack got up, calling them turtles, and tried to find them. While Kun and Baum hid behind the guy with multiple eyes, Kun introduced himself, shook Baum's hand, and asked where he got the Black March. Baum told him that Yuri had lent it to him to reunite with someone. Kun found this interesting and asked Baum to go with him. Baum agreed because Kun was the only person on the floor who hadn't tried to clap him. Meanwhile, Rack was still searching for them. In the middle of all this, there was a battle between a green reptile girl named Anok, with a whip-like weapon called the Green April, and a guy named Hats, who had two katanas. The Green April had a red mark like the Black March, part of the 13-month series. This made Anok a princess of Zahard like Yuri. While Anok and Hats fought, Baum and Kun counted how many people were left, which was 268. They were focused on hiding and waiting. Kun asked Baum if he had ever clapped anyone, but Baum said he hadn't. He couldn't remember his past, only what Rachel had taught him. Kun asked if Rachel was his girlfriend, but Baum said she wasn't. He felt like he belonged to Rachel, and that's why he had to climb the tower to find her. Kun said Rachel was like his rule. Baum didn't know what that meant, but they shook hands to become allies. Baum liked the idea of having someone on his side. The fight between Anok and Hats ended in a tie because they were both really strong. Then they met a guy named Shibisu, and they all decided to team up. Kun told Baum something important. He said that Baum shouldn't be stuck following the tower's rules. He should make his own rules. Kun also thought that if a princess of Zahard, like Yuri, was interested in Baum, it was worth believing in him too. But guess what? Rack suddenly appeared and tried to attack them. However, the time was up, and the 200 participants for the next phase had already been chosen. The announcer said that anyone who attacked after the announcement would be disqualified. The announcer then gave them five minutes to form teams of three people. If they didn't have a team, they'd be disqualified too. So Baum and Kun tried to team up with Rack, but he said no. He wanted to chase them as his prey. Kun told Rack that he would clap him and find another ally. Kun even got ready to fight Rack, taking out a knife from his briefcase. But Baum decided to fight Rack by himself without using his sword. He dropped his sword and asked Rack to hunt him as he was, without fighting back. This made Rack pause for a moment. Kun tried to convince Rack to make an alliance, but Rack hit him with his lance and said he wasn't interested. As time ran out, Kun climbed up and grabbed Rack's neck. Baum joined in, picking up his sword and dodging one of Rack's attacks. They were transported to the third floor, and Rack still wanted to fight Baum. But Baum refused to fight his new teammate. Kun told Rack that it was dangerous for Baum to use the sword because many people would want to hunt him for it. Two participants started fighting, but an examiner called Lero Ro stopped them. Examiners were super strong and had climbed the tower before. Lero Ro said that there were too many regulars and some needed to be eliminated. He used something called Shinsu to make a big barrier of water. The participants had to get past it to move on. Kun wondered if Baum could make it, but Baum surprised everyone by not getting pushed back by the water. He was still standing on the other side. Lero Ro was amazed and told Baum he had already passed the test. Then, Lero Ro made a bet with Baum on who would pass the barrier first. The loser would have to answer a question from the winner. Baum wanted to find out about Rachel. Lero Ro and Baum both chose Anok to be their champion. She was the first to cross the barrier, followed by her partner, Hats. Her other partner, Shibisu, had a tough time. Lero Ro called the bet a tie which was pretty cool since he was a ranker. Lero Ro agreed to answer Baum's question, but he didn't know about a girl with freckles named Rachel. 
Bomb asked about irregulars, and Lero Ro explained that they were people who didn't follow the tower's rules. The tower had three parts, and it seemed like Bomb and Rachel didn't come from any of the parts. Then, a participant got frustrated and said he wouldn't get disqualified because of some water barrier. So Lero Ro used Shinsu to silence the guy and make him quit the test. Lero Ro returned to Bomb and the other participants managed to pass the test. They moved on to the red door test. On the third floor, before the test began, Kun thought about his past, how he was betrayed and exiled for trusting someone. He remembered his mother's words about not trusting anyone. As he looked at the sky, Bomb came up and asked if the ceiling was too bright. But Kun told him there was no ceiling, it was the sky. Bomb had never seen the sky before, which surprised him. Bomb asked if you could see stars at night in the sky, as Rachel wanted to see the stars when she climbed the tower. Kun explained that stars were just a legend because the sky was created by the power of Shinsu and it wasn't real. This worried Bomb a bit, thinking about why Rachel would climb the tower without him. As the test started, teams of regulars entered a corridor to continue to the red door test. The next team went in, and they heard screams. Bomb, Kun, and Rack sat and waited for their turn while they waited. A guy who looked like a balloon approached them and said he had a clue about the test. Bomb asked what it was, and the guy mentioned that the groups that passed in less than five minutes didn't scream. He thought there might be a time limit. Kun wasn't sure about the guy's theory and questioned why he would share it with strangers. The guy talked about Kun's past and how he was abandoned by the Kun family. Kun got angry and pulled out a knife. Bomb tried to stop him, and Rack stood up, ready to fight. Kun backed away to avoid a fight in the waiting room. Then, it was their turn to proceed with the test. They entered a room with a giant clock, and red doors appeared. A guy named Yu Han explained the test. They had to open the right door to pass, but they could only choose one door, and they had 10 minutes. Yu Han wouldn't give them any hints. Kun analyzed the situation, thinking about what the right door could be. Rack was running around chaotically, and Bomb tried to calm him down. Kun tried to focus, but he couldn't come up with a solution. Kun remembered his mother's warning about not trusting anyone, and he tried to forget the clue from the balloon guy. He also thought about a girl named Maria who had betrayed him when she became a princess of Zahart. He couldn't trust anyone. With four minutes left, Kun was still thinking. Just before the five-minute mark, Rack, driven by instinct, kicked open a door and they passed the test. Yu Han congratulated them and explained that they just had to open any door before five minutes had passed. Yu Han knew about Kun's past and mentioned how Maria had traumatized him, making him someone who never made decisions unless he was absolutely sure. He also said that Kun needed companions who could make instinctive decisions, like Rack, and protect those eyes that don't know any doubt, referring to Bomb. Kun left without saying anything, and Yu Han wished him farewell, hinting that he knew what was in Kun's briefcase. Afterward, other groups also passed the test, including one with a guy who's always sleeping named Fonseca Laura and another with Anok. Bomb tried to ask Kun about Maria, but Kun didn't want to talk about it. On the lower floors, tests were still going on, and on the second floor, there was a group of hooded individuals, one of whom resembled Rachel. They clapped everyone who participated in the tests, which was against the rules. Quant, the examiner in charge, informed Yu Han about the group that had passed both tests. Yu Han agreed to help and contacted Lero Ro to resolve the matter. Bomb went to get a drink for Rack but realized he didn't have money. Shibisu approached and bought him the drink. Shibisu introduced himself and his team, consisting of Anok and Hats. Bomb thanked Shibisu and introduced himself as well. Shibisu felt a connection with Bomb and wanted to make it to the final together as acquaintances. Lero Ro then informed them about an extra test, the crown game, which wasn't mandatory. But most participants chose to participate. In this game, teams fought to reach the throne, and one member had to wear the crown. Their teammates protected the crown wearer while defeating other groups. Lero Ro mentioned that the new group, the hooded individuals, would participate as well. Shibisu's group decided to participate first, with Anok using her weapon, the Green April, to fight the other group. She defeated her opponents and put on the crown, ensuring no one could take it. Bomb saw Rachel among the hooded individuals in the distance. Bomb was convinced that he saw Rachel and called out to her. However, the girl from the hooded group, who might have been Rachel, didn't respond and remained still. Bomb started to doubt himself, thinking that maybe he was wrong because if it was Rachel, she would have answered. So, he refocused on the game. Lero Ro mentioned that Shibisu's group now had the crown, and he began a countdown for the next group to challenge them. Rack wanted to go next, but Kun advised waiting to make the best move. The countdown ended, and two more groups entered, a random group and Laura's group. Pats and Shibisu split up to protect Anok and the crown. 
Pats handled the random group, while Shibisu fought Laura's team. Laura, who was usually asleep, woke up and attacked Anok using Shinsu, making her angry. Anok dodged the attacks and used her green apple to counter Laura's group, causing the Black March to react strangely. Anok noticed the Black March's influence and stopped her attack, causing Laura's group to decide to leave the game. Anok destroyed their cell and confronted Bomb, demanding the Black March. Bomb refused, and Anok tried to take it by force but was stopped by Lero Ro, who disqualified her for leaving the throne. Anok proposed a bet to Bomb. If he won the test, she would give him her sword, and if she won, she would take the Black March. Bomb reluctantly accepted, and the test resumed. The test continued with more groups entering to fight. Kun managed to take the crown and hid it in his briefcase. He challenged the other groups to try and take it from him, using his briefcase to defend himself. After a series of dodges and maneuvers, Kun revealed a fake crown and placed the real one on Bomb's head, who sat on the throne. At that moment, the hooded group, led by Rachel, decided to take action. Rachel revealed her face, and her teammate in Dorsey, another princess of Zahard, prepared to eliminate all the participants. The battle and the test continued, with Kun revealing his clever plan to distract the other groups while getting the real crown to bomb. He showed his ability to copy objects using his briefcase. When three groups decided to team up and attack Kun, they were swiftly stopped by Rack. After a bit of rest, the fourth round began with more groups entering. Two groups agreed to ally but the third one chose to attack the two groups, defeating them all. Kun revealed that the third group, who didn't ally with the two groups, was their secret ally from a previous test, and he had planned this with them. Bomb's group saw their allies return to the cell but realized they got disqualified for helping them. Kun explained that they have to win the bet with Anok and explore the tower together. The final round started with the four remaining groups. A woman with a multi-eyed mask quickly defeated the other groups, leaving only Bomb's group, the hooded group, and her own. She went straight for Bomb but was stopped by Rack. She then charged at Bomb after managing to get Rack out of the way, and Bomb got defended by Endorsey from the hooded group. In the middle of the battle, Bomb recognized Rachel's voice but couldn't see her face due to the hood covering it. Rack asked Kun if he bribed the hooded group, but Kun explained that they were from a different testing floor and seemed uninterested in the crown. Kun and Rack defeated the other members of the masked woman's group. During the battle, the masked woman attacked Rachel causing her hood to fall and revealing her face. Bomb rushed to protect Rachel but was struck on the head and fell to the ground. Bomb was determined to protect Rachel but was injured. Subconsciously, he activated his Shinsu and seriously injured the masked woman whose name is HWA Ryan. Bomb then tried to deliver the final blow with the Black March, but it stopped him by freezing time and manifested in its female form. The Black March told Bomb to calm down and enjoy his reunion with Rachel. It kissed him on the cheek, causing him to faint. Later on, Yuri was desperately searching for a way to reach Bomb on the testing floor. Evan commented on Yuri's urgency, and they were interrupted by a big man named Curtin, who mentioned a safe place for advancing. Yuri agreed that they should move, and Curtin wondered if Bomb, the rookie, was that important. Yuri only said that when Curtin saw Bomb, he'd understand, as the boy possessed tremendous power. Meanwhile, back on the testing floor, Bomb was still unconscious on a stretcher, with Kun taking care of him. Lero Ro approached Yu Han to explain what had happened during the test. The crown game had ended in chaos, with the crown destroyed by Bomb's Shinsu. Lero Ro asked Yu Han why he had organized the game. Yu Han explained it was due to a mistake made by Quant, and his goal was to help the hooded group advance without Evankel noticing the other groups. Lero Ro noted that the hooded group had completely ignored the crown and suspected that one of the girls in that group seemed to know one of the examinees, which went against Hedon's rules. Yu Han reminded Lero Ro that they conducted tests to expel dangerous ideas or powers from the tower. He asked if they had found anyone like that, and Lero Ro replied that they hadn't. Yu Han believed that organizing the crown game was worth it. Lero Ro decided to leave but before he did, he asked Yu Han about controlling Shinsu without making a contract with an administrator. Yu Han admitted it went against the tower's laws but mentioned an irregular named Yurek Mazino who could do it. As Lero Ro walked down a corridor later, he realized that Yu Han had avoided the question because it seemed that Bomb didn't control Shinsu. He was Shinsu itself, which posed a clear danger to the tower. Back in his room, Bomb was still asleep, and Kun talked to him, urging him to wake up soon as there was another test the next day, and Bomb would be disqualified if he didn't wake up and participate in it. Rachel interrupted them, asking Kun for a favor. As Bomb remained unconscious, Rachel talked to Kun about how Bomb had pursued her when she first mentioned her intention to climb the tower. 
she never imagined they would meet again, which is why she asked Kun to lie to Bomb when he woke up, making him doubt whether he really saw Rachel. Rachel wanted to avoid problems between them, believing that they became burdens to each other when together. Kun thought Rachel was being selfish because Bomb truly wanted to be with her. While this was happening, Anak held the Black March and gave it to Shibisu, telling him to communicate with the sword because it didn't talk to women. Shibisu tried to talk to the sword, but it rejected him for not being handsome enough. It turned out the Black March only liked handsome men. Anak left with the sword, and as she did, Endorsi met her and continued with her condescending tone she had started at the crown game. Endorsi explained that the Black March belonged to Yuri, the only princess chosen in the last 500 years to receive one of the 13-month series swords. She warned Anak to reconsider keeping the sword, once again calling her an imposter. In another room, Kun pondered how he couldn't let Bomb continue associating with Rachel. Just then, Bomb woke up, and they told him he'd been sleeping for five days. Bomb worried that he might have missed something important and jeopardized the team. But to his relief, they explained that there was a three-day break for all the participants after the crown game incident. All was well. After the break, all the participants gathered in a large room to select their positions in their teams before moving on to the fourth test. Lero Ro explained that tower battles are conducted in teams, and these teams must have specific positions. There are five types of positions, fishermen for close combat. Spear bearer for ranged attacks, light bearer for strategy and information, scout for analyzing enemies, and wave controller for shinsu control. Kun asked if the injured participants would be disqualified, and Lero Ro mentioned they would be if they couldn't participate. Referring to Bomb, Lero Ro suggested he fit the wave controller position, but the instructor for that role, Yuga, wouldn't arrive for two more days, so there was time for Bomb to recover. Two days later, Bomb woke up, and Kuhn informed him of the news. Kuhn also mentioned Rachel and made Bomb believe the girl he saved was a stranger, which saddened him. Kuhn tried to cheer him up, saying that as Bomb climbed the tower, he would eventually encounter Rachel. He gave Bomb new clothes to replace the blood-stained ones from the previous battle. Bomb changed into the new clothes and thought about going to Rachel's room. But before he knocked on the door, he decided to leave. After the events, Bomb resumed his life at the tower and attended a class with other participants who were also being considered for the wave controller position in their teams. Master Yuga explained that Shinsu was a divine substance that controlled everything, and a contract had to be made on each floor with an administrator to use a fixed amount of Shinsu. Laura was the only one among them who had already made such a contract while he was asleep. Yuga asked the others to activate their pockets in visible mode to receive the order to make a contract with an administrator. Bomb did so and found himself transported into a dark realm, where a giant snake accepted the contract because it sensed a unique scent on him. This left Bomb completely exhausted, while the others seemed unaffected. Later, Bomb met HWA Ryan, the masked girl whose eye he had damaged. He apologized to her, and she accepted his apology before leaving. Laura and his teammate Ho then approached Bomb. Ho kindly offered his help if Bomb needed it, which Bomb accepted, forming new friendships and acquaintances. Bomb then returned to Kun, who informed him that Rack belonged to the spear bearer position and was currently in his class for training. In that class, they had to throw a spear at an extremely distant target. One of Rachel's teammates was also in the same class, showcasing himself as a skilled spear bearer and becoming Rack's competition. Following this, Shibisu and Hats approached Bomb with a favor. They needed to make friends with Bomb and Kun as part of an assignment. Bomb and Kun agreed, and they all went to the cafeteria to eat together. And Dorsey joined them, wondering how they could be friends when they were supposed to be enemies. Shibisu explained they needed to make at least nine friends as part of a test. However, Endorsi didn't believe in friendships between men and women but still decided to join them. Anak arrived, no longer part of Shibisu's group, and commented on Endorsi's fall from grace due to her actions. Bomb noticed the black march in Anak's hand and inquired if Anak and Endorsi were Yuri's sisters as fellow princesses of Zahard. Endorsi confirmed that they were chosen, not biologically related. They were selected from the best families and races as trophies that Zahard flaunted. Endorsi then attended her class for those who qualified as fishermen, a class in which they accumulated points by knocking down rivals, but their lives were at risk. She considered eliminating the others for more points, but Anok attacked her. Endorsi fought back, calling Anok weak for being nothing without the Green April, but Anok pointed out that they were all imposters since there were no genuine Zahard princesses. In the Light Bearer class, Kun's task was to gather information. He discovered that Rack had qualified for the next test and tried to find information about Rachel and Bomb, 
but the information he found was limited, raising suspicions. Kuhn also found information suggesting that Anok should be taking the tower's tests right now, but the data he had showed Anok is deceased. The battle between Anok and Endorsey continued, with both throwing participants into the abyss during their pursuit. Anok eventually caught up with Endorsey, but Endorsey halted her with a powerful strike. Endorsey demanded to know who Anok really was, and Anok revealed that she was the daughter of the true Anok, the authentic Zahard princess. Endorsey had realized this during the crown game, which was why she called Anok an imposter. However, Endorsey had stopped pursuing her because she became interested in someone else. Anok shared her past and her mother's tragic fate at the hands of the other Zahard princesses. This leads to her desire to avenge her mother by eliminating all the Zahard princesses, starting with Endorsey. An explanation was given about Zahard, who was the first man to climb the tower, becoming the king who founded the kingdom. Women who received Zahard's favor automatically became his princesses. These princesses didn't have to be his daughters, they came from all over the tower. However, the price for the power they received was that they couldn't have relationships with men or have children, to prevent the spread of the power given by Zahard. They were like pairs of shoes that no one could use, only admire. Some princesses chose not to obey this rule, like Anak's mother, who had a child and was eliminated by the other princesses because of it. This is why Anak wanted to avenge her mother from the other princesses. After this explanation, the battle between Anak and Endorsey continued. Endorsey dodged all of Anak's attacks and mentioned that Anak's mother had made a grave mistake because she couldn't propagate the power given to her. Anak became enraged and managed to get close enough to Endorsey to break her guard and push Endorsey off the edge. But Endorsey grabbed Anak and pulled her down as well ending the test. In the depths of the platform, both were still alive and started arguing. Endorsey asked Anok if her mother, who had treated her well after becoming a princess, ever regretted what she did. Anok told her no, remembering the moment when she said goodbye to her mother before her mother was clapped. In Baum's class, they were casting some sort of spell using Shinsu as part of their training for the upcoming test selections. Ho, oh, who had believed himself superior to Baum, noticed that he couldn't control his Shinsu while Baum continued to improve rapidly. Laura had taught Baum how to control his Shinsu in return for a favor. Kun arrived and left with Baum, making Ho envious of Baum. Kun told Baum about the fight between Anak and Endorsey who were both severely injured, suggesting that they probably fought due to their complicated relationship. Shibisu and Hats arrived, and Baum asked Kun to help Shibisu because Baum considered him his friend. In the hospital, Endorsey had a broken leg and mentioned that she ran out of points due to medical expenses. Baum and Hats visited her, bringing her food but only giving it to her if she agreed to become friends with Hats and Shibisu, with the condition that they would provide her with daily food. Endorsey accepted, and Baum and Hats tried to make a similar deal with Anak, who initially refused but was convinced with a chicken pie. Baum, Hats, Kun, and Shibisu celebrated the success of their plan. Later, in Shinsu class, Ho was still envious of Baum's sudden improvements and suspected he might be hiding something. After their training, Ho received a letter with instructions on what he needed to do to reach the top of the tower. Liro Ro had a meeting with Yu Han, who told him he wouldn't be in charge of the next test and would be replaced by Quant. Liro Ro accepted this decision even though he found it strange. Later, Liro Ro gathered all the participants to explain the next test, called the Joint Test, which involved a pursuit of Tag. Rack and Rachel's partner wouldn't participate because they were the only ones who passed the previous test. The participants would be divided into two teams, and Kuhn realized he was in Team A, while Baum was in Team B. The test involved two pursuers called it, one of them being Quant. The objective was to make their teams at reach the end goal or steal Quant's insignia. The winning team would receive points, but they'd lose if Quant took their insignia. The participants were taken to the circular building where the test took place, and Tima was already present. Kuhn acted as their leader, explaining his plan to lure Quant. They used Shibisu as bait, and while waiting, they managed to attract Quant, who played along. Tima had Anak as their it, and she tried to steal Quant's insignia, but Quant dodged her ambush, making him quite angry. This is why Lero Ro wanted to be in charge of this test because Quant got angry. He lost control. To Lero Ro's surprise, Quant held back and gave the participants a 111 second head start before chasing them. Lero Ro had doubts, but Yu Han believed Kuhn had a more elaborate plan. In Team B, Baum was determined to find Rachel who was using the name Michelle to hide her identity. Endorsey informed Baum that Rachel had already left, and when he asked why Endorsey chose her for their group, she explained it was the only option. Back in Time, they continued running towards a bridge, 
Hoping to win the test, Kun knew that Quant wouldn't make it easy for them, and Quant, after finishing his count, began chasing them. Kun organized the team, with Anak getting into an elevator and needing 10 minutes to reach the bridge. The rest of the team had to keep Quant occupied for at least 5 minutes. As Quant began climbing the stairs, the team set up an ambush. Quant understood the plan and decided to teach them a lesson. He used incredible speed and shadows to defeat the participants on the stairs within a minute. Anak exited the elevator and was escorted by her group. Quant caught up to her quickly as the others had been defeated. Shibisu suggested waking up Laura to help them. But Kun doubted Laura would assist since he had practically passed the test already. Lero Ro observed the situation and assumed they had already lost because Quant was getting closer to Anak, knowing which exit they were headed to. Rack warned Lero Ro not to underestimate Kun. Lero Ro considered the possibility that Kun had copied the insignia with his briefcase to confuse Quant. However, Yu Han explained that the insignias were modified with Shinsu and couldn't be copied. Shibisu and two others tried to stop Quant but were easily defeated. Kun was informed they lost sight of Quant. Quant reached the bridge where Anak was headed but encountered Kun. Quant asked about Anak, and Kun told him she had jumped to the lower exit. However, Quant didn't believe him. Kun claimed that Anak was running towards the exit. To deceive Quant, Anak hid inside a blue cube called a lighthouse, controlled by Kun. Kun tried to trick Quant into jumping off the bridge. Quant realized Kun was hiding something, so he decided to jump off the bridge while holding onto Kun. As Kun fell, he released his grip, allowing Anak's sword to save him. Quant fell to the ground alone. Anak climbed back onto the bridge, close to the finish line. Bomb watched with his team beat, feeling excited about Kun's apparent victory. However, the rest of his team looked at him strangely because Team B couldn't pass if Teema won. But Bomb was just excited for his friends. Anak was about to cross the finish line. But to her surprise, Quant was waiting there and swiftly grabbed her insignia, declaring Team as the loser. Team B celebrated because now they had a chance to take the test. In another room, Kun pretended to apologize to Teema for not being a good leader, but it was all part of a plan to save Bomb from disqualification. During the test, with Laura's help, Kun had gone to find Quant and help him climb up the bridge again to catch up with Anok. Meanwhile, in Team B, the members argued about who should be the leader, and Endorsey volunteered and was accepted as the leader. So, Team B attempted a strategy similar to Team A, moving the insignia toward the bridge. Endorsey, Bomb, and two others took the elevator, while Hats and a couple of spear bearers took the stairs. Serena and Ho waited at the entrance. Serena shared her loss of motivation with Ho, explaining that in the next test, they might have to fight and even harm the people they had come to consider as friends. She recalled a story of how she and her friends were thieves, and a ranker had come and killed them. Hedon had saved her and brought her to the tower. She admitted that at first, killing didn't bother her, but now, she was uncertain about it because of the connections she had formed. Ho, on the other hand, didn't care and showed that he was willing to step on others to advance further. Hats became alert as he sensed Quant approaching. He got ready and instructed the other spear bearers to prepare as well. When Endorsey and the others reached the bridge, she suddenly betrayed her teammates by attacking the two who weren't Bomb. Endorsey shared her painful past with Bomb and the group, describing how she came from a family that made adopted girls fight to become a princess of Zahart. She revealed that she had to endure a life of hardship, watching the other girls eat well while she had to eat stale bread. Eventually, she fought and defeated all the other adopted sisters to become a princess candidate. And Dorsey expressed her desire to eliminate some members from Team B, as only four could pass the test, and there were currently six in the group. She was determined to secure her passage to the next stage of the tower's trials. She told Bomb that he would have to make tough choices too if he wanted to climb with Rachel. Bomb struggled to understand this logic. In the meantime, Hats prepared an ambush with the two spear bearers, intending to take advantage of Quant's arrival. Quant arrived somewhat irritated about having to accept Kun's help from the previous game. On the other hand, Ho left Serena alone, as he was beginning to act on his own accord. Back with Endorsey, she continued to fight against the two participants she aimed to defeat. Bomb tried to reason with her, reminding her of her own past when she was weak. But when she let her guard down, one of the participants attacked her. Bomb stepped in to protect Endorsey, but then he decided to find Rachel on his own. Rachel was in her lighthouse when Ho interrupted her. He took her hostage, knowing that he could use her to manipulate Bomb. He claimed he had received a mysterious letter instructing him to do this. The test transmission was temporarily stopped to prevent the other team from witnessing these events. Lero Ro wanted to interrupt the test, but Yu Han insisted on continuing. Hats fought Quant to buy some time, but he was clearly outmatched. 
He had hoped the spear bearers would ambush Quant, but they betrayed him, fleeing and leaving him to fend for himself. Quant realized this betrayal and decided to confront the traitors. Ho, holding Rachel hostage, panicked as he noticed Bomb approaching. Ho demanded that Bomb fight Quant to save Rachel's life. Bomb, driven by his love for Rachel, agreed without hesitation. Quant used Shinsu to immobilize Bomb, as he was more interested in pursuing the it for the test. Ho, in his desperation, ended up stabbing Rachel. Bomb managed to use the same immobilization technique he learned from Quant, incapacitating Ho. As Ho lay on the ground, he revealed his envy and explained how his own weakness had prevented him from protecting anyone in his village. He admitted that he didn't actually want to harm Rachel but had targeted Bomb out of resentment. Then, Ho tragically took his own life. Serena arrived at the scene to find Ho already dead, and Quant approached them to inform them that the test must continue. Bomb couldn't believe he had lost his friend Ho, and was deeply concerned for Rachel. And Dorsey also arrived to engage Quant in a battle that she ultimately won by tricking him into believing he had stolen her badge when, in fact, she had taken his. From the control room, Yu Han declared the test over, with Team B emerging as the winners. The next day, Rack tried to explain how Rachel's companion vanished, and they asked in Dorsey about him. In Dorsey said she didn't know him well because he was always quiet, and when she found him, he was already with Rachel. Kuhn returned to his room, thinking about the fact that only two wave controllers would pass the test, referring to Bomb's position. He realized that Laura would likely qualify and that everything he did was to ensure Bomb earned enough points to pass. This included convincing Laura to help with his plan and swapping the original letter that Ho received with a different one. A bit later, while Kuhn was resting in his room, he was interrupted by Rack, who called him to the door. Kuhn opened it and found a miniature Rack, teasing him. Rack explained that it was Yu Han's fault, as he had bumped into him in the corridors and called him a tiny dwarf. But by the time he realized who he was, Rack had become the dwarf. Rack asked Kuhn for help to grow back using his magical briefcase, but Kuhn told him it didn't have that function. Rack then went to annoy Bomb, but Kuhn advised against it, as he sensed that Bomb had no intention of continuing to climb the tower. Bomb's sole motivation had been Rachel, and now that she was in a coma, he might stay with her. Rack didn't care and said he would drag Bomb along if needed, asking Kuhn if he wanted Bomb to stay stuck there. Kuhn admitted he couldn't do anything, but Rack insisted that he could. As Rack was about to leave, Bomb appeared and informed them that Rachel could no longer walk due to her wound. He had decided to continue climbing the tower and be Rachel's legs. Bomb didn't care about reaching the tower's summit or the stars, he just wanted to help Rachel. Hearing this, Kuhn remembered his own relationship with Maria and reflected on what might have happened if he had abandoned his goals back then. Bomb asked for their help, and Kuhn pushed Rack aside, telling Bomb to count on him. Kuhn was proud of his clever and cunning tricks and promised to help Bomb reach the top. Bomb then requested a favor to say goodbye to Ho in a kind of funeral. Serena, who had been close to Ho, arrived, as did Shibisu and the others who considered Ho a friend. Quant and Lero Ro also joined, and a small ceremony was held with a toast. Later, Bomb was with Rachel, thanking her for attending the funeral despite Ho's actions. Rachel began to cry and confessed that she had abandoned him because she wanted to see the stars and considered his weakness a nuisance. She told Bomb she was no longer the Rachel he loved and said he could abandon her if he wanted. Bomb remembered her as the light in his life, the person who saved him from his dark world. He explained that now he had many friends, but she was the first person he had ever met and was irreplaceable to him. Rachel apologized for everything and cried. During the night, Serena left the tower without saying goodbye to anyone. Shibisu had anticipated her departure and waited at the exit to bid her farewell. Serena asked him not to meet the same fate as Ho and gave him the dagger she had used. In another scene, Master Yuga secretly talked to someone, mentioning that they would soon retrieve the Black March and the Green April. However, he was interrupted by Yu Han who discovered his true identity as Ren, the 67th agent of Zahard's royal enforcer. Yu Han offered to help Ren complete his mission, as he considered Anok a threat to the tower's rules. Meanwhile, Kuhn met with Lero Ro and informed him about the letter given to Ho. He explained that the letter was delivered before the teams were formed, indicating that the sender knew the participants' positions, specifically that Baum and Rachel were on the same team. This meant the source of the letter was likely one of the test organizers. Later, Lero Ro sought out Yu Han to announce the successful participants. In a subsequent room, they announced the passing candidates by class. Fishermen, spear bearers, scouts, and wave controllers who had qualified. Rachel was also listed as a light bearer, but due to her injuries, she was disqualified. 
When one participant complained about the results, Yu Han subjected him to a pain tolerance test. Kun, who was bold and confident, expressed his dissatisfaction and was called forward. He asked for Rachel to participate in the final test, but Yu Han explained that due to her condition, it was impossible. Baum decided to speak up, revealing himself as an irregular. Yu Han asked Baum to accompany him somewhere. While the others debated their decision to collaborate with Baum, Baum was escorted by Yu Han. The majority chose to help Baum as they waited for his return. Baum stood before the administrator and requested permission for Rachel to continue participating in the test. As Baum and Rachel entered the Shinsu bubble, they knew that they were the prey in the underwater hunt test. The others had become hunters. Net dolphins, which looked like seals, would fish once a day for their queen by creating a Shinsu net. Baum and Rachel's bubble had to be caught in this net and then spat out by the queen, which would mean they passed the test. The hunter's task was to protect the fish collected by the net dolphins from goblins who used worm-like creatures as vacuum cleaners. Allowing the goblins to steal the fish would fail the test. Striped pig-like creatures in the area could scare away the goblins but participants had to keep them near the net dolphins or use them to distract the goblins. Lastly, a terrifying monster known as the bull roamed the area, and they had to avoid it at all costs. The test began, with Baum and Rachel inside the Shinsu bubble. The seals entered the water, while Hatz's group watched over the goblins. Rack and the spear bearer group waited above, ready to join the fight when needed. Shibisu's group guarded against the pigs, and Kun observed from the lighthouse. Yuri's group, which was getting closer to Baum, also started to move. Baum talked to Rachel about Yuri, mentioning that she was the princess who lent him the sword. Hats informed Kun that his companions had disappeared. Shibisu found himself facing the bull, which was devouring a participant. He tried to get its attention, but it wasn't easy. Eventually, he jumped onto the bull with Serena's dagger, trying to attack it, but it was futile. Anak arrived to fight the bull, and Endorsi also joined the fight. They made a bet. If Anak defeated the bull, Endorsi would become her servant for life. If she lost, Anak would surrender the green April to Endorsi. Simultaneously, Rack received a message from Hats about the goblins' movement. There were more goblins than expected. Kuhn instructed Hats to find out their destination, and Rack's spear bearer group prepared for a surprise attack. In the Shinsu bubble, the net dolphins were forming their net. Kun, unable to see the depths, relied on Neri, who was on the surface with Laura. Neri controlled Divine Fish with Shinsu to help Kun locate an underground path. Indorsi continued her battle with the bull but hadn't defeated it yet, and her turn was almost up. The monster captured her, but she managed to break free. The bull let out a loud scream and fled. Anak kept searching for the bull and came across Ren. Anak tried to ignore Ren, but when he mentioned her mother and showed her mother's necklace, she stopped. Ren introduced himself and admitted to being the one who killed her mother, shocking Anak. Meanwhile, the goblins continued advancing. Rack asked if they could attack, but Kun stopped him. He had another plan thanks to Neri's abilities. Anak attacked Ren to take the necklace back, but Ren defended himself and wounded Anak, stabbing her through the abdomen. Then Ren took the green April and handed it to Endorsi, telling her to clap the imposter, Anak, and redeem herself. This specific test was designed to eliminate Anak since her birth went against the tower's rules. Endorsi was given the green April to carry out this task. As Hats tried to remain hidden from the goblins, he and one of the spear bearers were discovered, causing their plans to go awry. Endorsi approached Anak not to finish her off, but to return the Green April and receive the Black March. They planned to confront Ren together. Meanwhile, Shibisu continued to search for the princesses and, while shouting, encountered Yuri. Rack grew tired of fleeing from the goblins, so he decided to confront them. Back with the princesses, they managed to subdue Ren. However, when Endorsi lowered her guard, Ren attacked her and then Anak, leaving Anak wounded. Yuri arrived at the scene, surprising Ren. Ren introduced himself, and Yuri saw her sword on the ground and decided to take the job of recovering the swords into her own hands. Back with Rack, he and the other spear bearers got surrounded by multiple goblins. Laura used his powers to make his companions float in the air to protect them. Goblins were now fighting against pigs led by Neri, Laura, and Kuhn. Everyone thanked Kuhn, who decided to take a break. Suddenly, someone very similar to Kuhn, Hatchuling, appeared. He was Kun's relative, and he had been accompanying Yuri on her journey along with Evan and Kurt. Meanwhile, Yu Han watched the tests with Lero Ro and Quant and realized there was an infiltrator. When they tried to identify the infiltrator, the signal was cut by Hatchuling. Lero Ro found Yu Han suspicious for staying calm during this situation. Hatchuling spoke with Kun, but Kun wasn't particularly interested in what he had to say. Hatchuling offered to take Kun to see Princess Maria, but Kun declined the offer. 
Evan and Curtin rushed to find Yuri. Even though she wasn't in trouble, they needed to be by her side. On the way, they were interrupted by Yu Han, who invited them for coffee and raised several questions. However, Evan got straight to the point and told Yu Han they were there to retrieve the Black March. Yu Han understood and maintained a neutral stance. Meanwhile, Yuri effortlessly defeated Ren. Just as she was about to kill him, Evan communicated with her through his pocket, telling her she couldn't help Anak. Yuri stepped away from Ren, and Curtin eliminated him. As Kun rejected an offer to see Maria, Hats tried to help him fight Hatchuling, but Hatchuling dodged the attack and withdrew. Hats sensed that something bad was happening, as Kun usually didn't rest when his friends were in danger. Ren lay crushed, while Yuri managed to recover the Black March. Ren told Yuri that what she was really looking for was Bomb, who had been targeted by the bull. Bomb was talking to Rachel, mentioning that he was no longer the same because he had friends now and could control Shinsu to some extent. Suddenly, the bull arrived and started attacking him. Yuri wanted to interfere, but Anok and others urged her not to, as it would disqualify Bomb. They decided to trust Bomb to pass the test. Bomb was struggling against the bull, getting injured multiple times. He eventually freed himself by exploding the monster from the inside using his Shinsu, emitting a radiant light. After defeating the bull, Bomb fell into Rachel's arms. Yuri trusted Bomb's friends, so she took the green April and left a message for Bomb with Shibisu, asking him to tell Bomb that she would be waiting on the 77th floor. She then left with Evan. Evan encountered HWA Ryan, who turned out to be a guide as well. He didn't understand why she was in that place. Returning to Bomb and Rachel, they were about to be swallowed by the Queen of the Net Dolphins. Bomb believed they would pass the test and could climb the tower together. Rachel asked to hold his hand, but then she surprisingly pushed him out of the Shinsu bubble, sending him falling into the deep abyss. Bomb was left in shock as he watched Rachel distance herself and sank deeper into the depths. Rachel appeared strangely calm after betraying her best friend, Bomb. We got to see a memory of how she came to the tower in the first place. She wasn't the chosen one, Bomb was. Head on, the guardian of the first floor, showed Rachel an awakening of a savior, making it clear that Bomb was the person they were waiting for. Rachel begged to climb the tower and said she'd do anything. Head on agreed to give her a chance but with a test, she had to clap Bomb. In other words, she had to stop him herself. Rachel accepted but said she was too weak, so Head On offered her a powerful guardian to fight on her behalf, and even to bring her back to life once if needed. This guardian was the same companion she had when she met in Dorsey. The companion gave up his life to bring Rachel back, and that's how Rachel managed to catch up to Baum and try to clap him. As time went on, Rachel's envy and hatred for Baum grew. She was frustrated by his growing circle of friends and the attention he received. HWA Ryan and a ranker helped Ho clap Rachel in a plan to get her closer to Bomb. Rachel's plan worked, and she was alone with Bomb again, aiming to end him once and for all. In the end, Rachel betrayed Bomb and pushed him out of the Shinsu bubble. After this, Rachel lied to the others, saying that Bomb couldn't survive the attack from the bull. Later, Lero Ro gathered the participants and informed them that Bomb's body couldn't be found, suggesting the fish may have eaten him. The test was over and everyone had passed. Mom's friends, except Kuhn, vowed to fulfill their promise to take Rachel to the top of the tower to see the stars. Kuhn had suspicions about Rachel but pretended to go along with the plan. Lero Ro decided to resign and invited Quant to investigate the matter by climbing the tower further. Meanwhile, Yu Han took the remaining participants to continue their tests in a different location. Bomb was revealed to be alive and was found by HWA Ryan. He woke up and wanted to know why Rachel tried to harm him. HWA Ryan told him he had to climb the tower again to find the answers to everything. She offered to help him train. Several years passed, and we saw the adult bomb with his back to us, continuing his journey to climb the tower. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.